what was your knowledge? What was your education on just a, a DVT, VTE, blood clots in general? I think it's just a good foundational starting point for us. Yeah, that's great. And um, Austin, if I'm going to be honest, uh, so I didn't know anything <laughs> about. Uh, and what's ironic about that was um, the first time I experienced a, a DVT and had, you know, we'll get into my story, I guess, in here in a second. I was a. Uh, um, studying to get going to medical school. So I actually have like a pretty good background when it comes to the biological sciences, medicine. I was doing a post uh, back degree. Um, I have a degree in biomedical sciences, you know, anatomy, physiology, all of that stuff um, was my bread and butter. Um, no, by, my um, knowledge was very limited. And um, it, I so much so that I didn't, I didn't know what was happening until much later what was what was changing in your everyday environment that kind of threw it off of like hey there's something there's something happening man uh so the first thing was uh i remember uh sleeping in my in my room and uh waking up to like just like chest pain i feel like if you're waking up and you're like having a heart attack it's like one of those things that you'll like automatically think like i need to call the you know ambulance or something it wasn't like that it was just um it, it hurt, but it was um, kind of bearable. And I think part of it was ignorance. Part of it was me being a young male that, you know, thinking I'm indestructible. <laughs> I'm just like, psh, chest pain, <laughs> whatever. Walk it off. You know, after the next day, it kind of subsided a little bit. Mm -hmm. But that's when, like, other things started to kind of happen. I think the final straw that happened was... Um, I'm actually studying for a final and I'm actually reviewing flashcards at my desk and uh, my vision just starts no. to like go dark and I literally go like blind for a second. Um, so I start panicking like I'm because I'm, you can imagine yeah. like, yeah, my, and like I know like my vision is just disappearing. But then, you know, maybe like two or three minutes later, my vision starts to come back a little bit and I start to calm down and I'm like, all right, that was weird. Um, something is definitely off here. It's it's weird how it affects people differently, but we all have that human nature of like, once something dissipates kind of fairly quickly, you kind of, it's uh, the short-term memory kind of syndrome where it's like, ah, oh, yeah. you know, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. It was just a flu, yeah. right? Walk me through kind of where, what they their process was like with you to kind of hope, I mean, yeah. obviously diagnose this. Right. And so, you know, I've no pre-existing conditions or anything for me so i walked in literally yeah, just, you're young you're healthy yeah. you know like exactly. uh, it's, it's not the not the stereotypical like diabetic smoker that's right, you know, right. years old you know yeah yeah so to be honest i didn't even know what to tell the doctors you know i just started walking them through the series of events that had been happening um after a while uh, and i kind of told them my story they decided to do um a ct scan I believe mm -hmm. of like my chest. Once again, like you know, they weren't. They were more so doing it just to like cross it off of their list. Like they weren't necessarily expecting to see anything. But as far as all the other tests and stuff, what that they did, um, everything came back like null. By the end of it all, when I actually got the CT scan, um, and you know, I was like, "Is that it?" They were like, "Yeah." You know, it was a Friday at the at the time, so it's always like, a Friday, man. Yeah, it's, it's, always, always, it's always a Friday. Friday. It's, it's like, like a wait I, and I already day. know they're like they checked out two hours ago. They're ready to be out. <laughs> I am too. And um, just yeah. to kind of reference this, you know, obviously I just had a final, so yeah. my weekend plan was to like take a mega bus down to DC where I'm from. And like one of my best friends, this was his birthday that weekend. Yeah. So I was playing a party all weekend. Yeah, basically. hang like, out. That was, of, yeah. that was my mindset. So I was like, like are we ready to, can I go? Like <laughs> I have a bus, a bus to catch, you know what I mean? So um, they're like, yeah, well, you know, we'll let you know probably by Monday or Tuesday with the results. And, um, uh, and, and I kind of just left and that was, that was that. So yeah, it wasn't until the ride down that I got the, <laughs> the crazy news so um uh so i was on the mega bus at this point and so at the at that point where i got the call we were somewhere in delaware so i get the call um i see it you know on my phone i ignore it initially because yeah. i'm just like you know i don't like picking up random calls see yep. another call immediately so once that happens you're like all right you know whatever I, I pick it up and then i remember i just came from the doctor's office well maybe it's them and uh, I hear the doctor on the phone. He's like, hey, this is Dr. So-and-so, um, you know, is, are you Gabe? And I'm like, yeah. And she asked me, you know, where are you at currently? And I tell her, oh, I'm on a mega bus heading down to DC. 
And I hear her, so she gasps. She says, oh my God. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? Tell me what's happening. And they're like, how are you feeling right now? You know, are you having chest pain? And at the point I was feeling fine. Like yeah. I was gonna be honest, I was, you know, everything kind of, kind of, you know, was as it was. So that's when she finally breaks the news. First time I ever hear it in my life. She's like, you know, uh, we did the CT scan and came back. Um, we found, um, it looks like you're suffering from a PE. You have some blood clots in your lungs. Um, honestly, it's amazing you're even talking to me right now. Uh, we need to get you to a hospital right now. And so once again, I'm like, you know, flood of fear, you know, rushes over me and I'm like, okay, you, you know, let's, let's do this. Right. So <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm in the middle of a mega bus. All these people are around. Half the bus is asleep at this point. Cause it's like, you know, the middle of the trip. Yeah. yeah. I walk up to the bus driver and I'm like, uh, I actually, I have to get off. And he's like, no. sorry, can't, can't do that. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, if he's my doctor, I'm yeah. dying. So uh, I need to like get to a hospital immediately. And wow. after um, I give the phone to the, the bus driver, the, the phone to the bus driver, and he just talks to the doctor. They pull off right in the middle of the highway and call the ambulance. Um, <laughs> and the funny thing though is finally when the ambulance comes, uh, so at this point, you know, everybody on the bus is like, what's going on? Oh uh, yeah. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're Keanu Reeves and speed, <laughs> man. Like, right, right, right. You know, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So at this point, I'm just like, at this point, I'm just thinking like worst case scenario. I'm like, I need to get to the hospital. I need to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Um, still not really understanding what's, what's happening. Um, so finally ambulance shows up and, um, it shows up on the other side of the highway. So, you know, you have two, tra <laughs> you know, traffic going, you know, down this way. So, uh, and I'm I'm waving at this point. I'm like, yeah. guys, like, you know, I'm yeah. the one you need to pick up. So they realize it, but it's the highway. Like, there's no way to get to me unless they like go down. You know, maybe ten other ten more miles, get off an exit, and come back around. Do not so, tell me you're playing Frogger across the highway. So I'm not gonna lie. I thought about it. I, I really <laughs> did. I thought about it for a second, and then you know something came over me. I'm like, no. But what ended up happening was this guy. I, to this day, I, I really don't know. Like, but guy p comes over and he like realizes I'm frantic. I guess he puts two and two together and realizes I need to get to the ambulance. He approaches me and he's like, "Hey, do you need to get to the other side?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he's like, "So apparently the guy worked. Um, we were right next to like a toll, one of those ticket toll booths, like you know, the Easy Pass. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, something like that. It wasn't like it, it was um something similar. Um." And there was a pathway that you can take, like you take some steps down and you actually go under the highway, a tunnel and come up on the other side. And so he's like, yeah, you know, I work here, you know, you need to go over there. And so he kind of tells me this and I'm like, what are the chances? But hey, let's do it. So he like, you know, flags the, you know, security, the details and lets the, the cops know. And then so we go through this tunnel and I go, you know, tunnel all the way under the highway, come up on the other side. And they loaded me in the um, ambulance and uh, yeah, head straight to the hospital. So, oh um, yeah. But if that I to this day, I sometimes I think about it. If that guy wasn't there, like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, well, I don't, at that point, I don't. I can't say I was thinking clearly. So I'm. Yeah. <laughs> I might have tried something. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and you, you think about the, you think about the timing element of it too. I mean, the and blood clots travel in your body and. Yeah. If there's, you know, if there was an amount of time that if there was a, you know, a clock to this, like that saved a lot of time. Right. Right. That, right, that's right. Crazy. Those little things that kind of add up to that. You exactly. Know? Yeah. And that's wow. those are the, the things that you think about in hindsight, like, man, if, if yeah. any one of these things could have it could have been a different scenario. So what what has changed in your life? because of this, right? Um, is there something you're more cognizant of, or maybe your body feels different, or maybe you're on a certain, you know, path that you have to stay within now because of it? I mean, I can go through the list of things that I kind of like went through that I just kind of like, man, like, you know, whatever, I'll, I'll figure it out, you know, or it's, it's, it's fine. You know what I mean? Um, but really, uh, being okay with like, being aware with my body, understanding when something is kind of off or out of alignment and being okay to like, go get, go get it checked out. Right. And not waiting six months before, you know, I'm like collapsing before something to happen. I, I went from not seeing the doctor ever to like, 
you know, once a week I'm I'm running to the hospital because I'm thinking I'm dying again because yeah. I have an itch on my elbow and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, you know, somewhat related. So it's, it's scary. I get it. But, you know, you learn to kind of take it one day at a time um, and really stay grounded with like your beliefs. Like I'm a Christian personally. So like, you know, mm -hmm. really got me closer to that too as well. And just like um, learning that uh, although it is scary and it is traumatic, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be like the endo and all be all and um you do have power to kind of like overcome <laughs> so yeah. to speak, like not let those thoughts kind of drive you crazy because they will if if you let them <laughs>